if I were to show you a coin and give it a little squeeze like this and break it down and, and have it disappear absolutely and then snap my fingers and have it come back again, that would look like magic. But it wouldn't be seeing magic like a magician sees it because we see things much differently. If you were to see it like I see it, you'd see how I play with all my things, I, I, like this. I would show you a coin, kind of like this, I'd give it a little squeeze like that, and it breaks it down into powder. It becomes this little ball of dust, which you can take this little ball of dust, take it, you toss it, and you play with it. Yeah, there you go. Can you see it? If you look really closely, you can actually see it, and you can break it apart like this, push it together, and if you push it together, you can make a little wire out of it. It makes this little wire like this, and if you take it just like this, take it, toss it in the air, and you it just like that, catch it like that. And as you pass your hand back over, you see it comes back again, just like that. Want to try it? Here, you try it. Hi, Peter. Hey. You've been in the magic business for quite some time now. Yeah. Um, what is your opinion about the new generation of magicians, uh, the so-called media generation, where everything has to be quick and snappy? I think it's a wonderful thing. I, I'm all in favor of new growth and change and things. I, I only hope that there is time as they mature and get older that they find ways to, to, to tie what they do to things that people care about in the heart. There's a lot of room for people to do things that are spectacular and wonderful and exciting and wow, and it's great, and does this. Um, but you can only eat so much dessert. Sometimes you need to have a little sweet, a little sour. Sometimes you need to be able to mix your courses up, which is why we have an aperitif, which is why we have these different parts of a meal. Uh, I think it's important to, to serve a full meal to an audience. Okay. Um, the most of the new effects that are coming out, mm -hmm. they are rehashes of, uh, of old effects of, uh, or old methods. Uh, do, do you keep up with the new trend, or do you think classical is the way to go? Uh, I actually do try to keep up with things that are coming out. I try to follow as much as possible what's new and exciting because you never know. You might find something that's really better than the old things mm -hmm. because there's always room for development. And, and I have to say, I mean, I talk about it a little bit in the lecture, that there are t techniques and technologies that now are available to us that weren't available before. You just look at a deck of cards, I mean, from 100 years ago to, to 150 years ago, the quality of the cards is so much better. And, and you just have this really this opportunity. Of course, what that means is that people are also a lot more aware. They're exposed through the internet. They are, they've seen a lot of stuff and it's like, oh, I can go, I can research that. Oh, that fooled me, let me go look it up. So you wanna try and find ways that are not exposed on the internet. You wanna try and find ways that are new and exciting that are not out there. So I think you have to look past the classics, but I think the plots on the classics are very interesting and, and uh, are solid. So, as you are aware, I do a lot of classical pieces and, and use the magic as the classics that are there, but I've also developed a lot of things of my own that are brand new and that are not classics, that use ideas and concepts, but find their own way of doing things. Is it hard for you to take over a new method yeah. or to learn something new? Because I can imagine if you have um, a certain way of doing things, like muscle memory, it's, uh, it's really hard to learn something new. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, there are some. I have things that I don't. I, I that I don't do well. I've never had a good memory. So, uh, mnemonica is very tough for me for this. Um, it's very powerful. It's great. It's wonderful. And I play with it and I use it, but I don't use it professionally at this point. Uh, but I do it. I play with it and using this. So there's that that happens in there. So. I think what you learn to do is that as you grow older, you or you sort of push your, you tr should try to push yourself. So I've recently, over the last couple of years, I've tried to push myself much more towards comedy, and try to find things that are really funny, mm -hmm. and to push myself in that area to do things. So um, uh, I, th I think it's just that it takes you longer to learn things as you get older. So, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you stop. So you constantly try to do new things and uh, try to improve what you do. There's, I mean, there's some great material that's out there, oh, true. you know. Um, you call yourself an illusionist slash philosopher and you have a physics background. Was uh, magic... I'm sorry. <laughs> was magic the place where you found you can combine these two, physics and philosophy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a really good question. I think that the idea, the, the, the connection between magic and physics, in, in my mind, is that 
in physics, you try to understand why things work and how they work and, and make them repeatable so that you don't just have things happen by accident, but you try to find an understanding and a theory that explains why things work and then be able to use, do them again and again. And maybe these things lead you to new ideas and discoveries. Uh, the philosophy is much more about why and not how. So magic is this great opportunity to explore the methodologies, to find techniques and, uh, that, that are interesting and working, which is where sometimes when you push yourself into sort of the area of mentalism, you can play with ideas and new concepts that are there, but also the new technologies that come out, and new ways of doing things, but also really developing the psychology and really understanding uh, how people think and how you can get to the certain areas. Uh, then the idea of um, philosophy, as much theater as philosophy, because to me, theater is, is creating a public event around mm -hmm. philosophy. So philosophy is sort of a bigger overall theoretical understanding of the why of the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, theater is the performance that allows you to explore this, because ultimately for me, it's about art. Yep. And art is technically a leap of imagination. You want people, if they're seeing a piece of art, to, to, to have their minds and their thoughts go to someplace they've not gone before. Yeah. New ideas, new concepts, something that they've not thought of that goes, oh! And, and so the nice thing about magic is that you can actually, hopefully, get that place sometimes with people. Um, can you tell me what makes a good piece of magic? Is it the clever method behind it? Is it um, the concept? Or is everything just in the eye of the beholder? So does your spectator define what good magic is? You know, I don't think the spectator defines what good magic is. I think that in order for it to be really good magic, it has to work for a spectator. But I think that you've got a lot of... Uh, I think it really is this combination. It's finding the, the way that the method works to support for magic to be mm -hmm. fooling. But, you know, sometimes the methods can be incredibly simple. Sometimes there are times when you, you find uh, a solution to a problem of how do I make this happen that is just completely simple. It's not technologically difficult. Uh, and then the concept is what makes the piece delightful. So I, I think you really have to find this balance between technique, which has to be really good. Mm -hmm. it, the, the example that was given to me once when we were uh, filming uh, for, a, for a, a movie that we were working on, uh, is that the audience, when they're in a movie, they go with you. They are willing to give themselves into this incredible world, this despair. This But if the microphone comes down into the yeah. picture, all of a sudden you've destroyed it for them. It's like and, and fort wall. Yeah, but even more than that, you've betrayed them. Yes. Because they're trusting you to allow them to be safe inside this world. And when you do that, all of a sudden you've, you've let them down. So I think that the technique and the magic ultimately has to be the same thing. It has to be so good, or appropriately good, so that they can relax. Because ultimately you don't want this to be a test. This is not a challenge, this is not a puzzle, this is not, I'm going to do this and you can't figure this out. Because I can fool you, because I'm smarter than you are. And I'm th it's, it's not what it's about. It's about trying to be, find a connection with these people that you can then maybe take them to this leap of imagination, some place they've not been, that they didn't expect to go to in this evening tonight. And if the technique that you use is not good, then you are bringing the microphone down into the picture frame. And you're, you're, you're betraying your audience. You're betraying their trust. So the technique has got to be really good um, for what you're doing. And then the rest of it has to work around it. You mentioned movies and theater a couple of times. Yeah. Do you use classic plots from theater to create hard touching effects or does everything come by instinct? That's why I rely on directors. Okay. Because there's a certain part that I just follow instinct on mm -hmm. this, but there are times when my instinct is just too mushy. It's not clean, it's not, it's not sharp enough. And so I oftentimes rely on a director or a friend of mine who is really understands theater. Uh, I, I've been working on a piece now for many years. Um, started a long time ago. 
because sometimes you have an idea for something and you just sort of go, it's, it's here, something, there's something here. I don't know what it is, there's something here. So I've always liked Seven Keys of Bald Paint, the, the locks and the keys. Mm -hmm. I've always liked this idea, but it always seems to me that it's not just a puzzle. It's gotta be somehow this interesting, people need to care about it. So years ago on a cruise ship, so I, I, I brought up people a couple and I, I actually chained her to the microphone stand mm -hmm. and then he had to find the key but I brought up other guys who also got keys and maybe they would get lucky so I tried to find, and that was like okay but it wasn't the answer and I've actually uh, finally found what I think is the answer because it's this wonderful picture of uh, and I'm actually releasing this uh, okay. through Bill Abbott he's convinced me to put this out so it's called key to her heart and the idea came years ago when my partner Karen said, look at this, it was a picture of a bridge in Italy that was covered with locks. These of are called course. the love locks. Yeah. Exactly. And so I thought, wow, that's so romantic, it's wonderful. Um, but isn't he going to need the key to unlock her heart again tomorrow mm -hmm. instead of just throwing it away? Mm -hmm. So I built this whole routine around this. And now I have what I think is, is to me, finally, after all these years, I finally found the routine that I want because my partner Karen said, look at this picture. And I went, oh, this is exactly what I've been looking for. But it's all the years of struggle, of trying and saying and asking the questions, why? And not being happy with it. And then finally you go, hmm, that's right. And then my friend Ossie Wind looked at what I was working on and said, too much, too busy. I understand what you're trying to do, but it's not mm -hmm. right. You need one lock, one key. And a little, and, and I went, oh. And my friend Bob Sheets said, yeah, it should be a little, it should be a heart-shaped box with maybe candy or something. And I went, mm -hmm. so these things between the ideas that come in and then the shaping of this um, and relying on somebody, an external eye. So when I work, I tend to be a little sloppy, but I think that's okay. And I try not to judge myself. I simply go, there's something in here. I'm trying to get it out. I will use whatever techniques I can to try and do this mm -hmm. and then bring in ideas. And there's that. And then there's sometimes there's classic you know, sometimes there's classic stuff, too. Sometimes a piece of music. I wrote a piece many, many years ago called Smoke, mm -hmm. and it's all about a wine glass that I fill with smoke. Uh, I it, sort of joke about it being adult toys, and so there's a, a $100 bill rolled up to make a tube and a cigar, and fill the glass with smoke, and you pour out the smoke, and, uh, and then cover the, put the glass down, put smoke underneath, and then there's a coin appears, and then more and more ends up with all these coins. The idea came because I listened to Paco Bell's canon, the canon in D, okay. in De Mol. Uh, and so this music, when I think about it, makes me feel that I'm on a, on a raft in the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's drifting, completely surrounded by this fog. Okay. So, and then, so this idea of the fog, and I've always loved fog, so this idea of fog and movement and this, this led me to this idea of the smoke and watching the smoke in the glass, an old bar gag, and then finding that so you can pour. So this idea, sometimes you get these strange ideas and you don't know where it comes from, but it's just this inspiration. The Buster Keaton film with a big paper or mm -hmm. this piece of music or seeing somebody do something. You see the pictures of the locks on the bridge. Do you have any plans for the future that are magic related? Any new plans? You're gonna bring out a new effect, or are there any other plans? Like yeah, so a couple of things. I'm gonna re-release theatrical close-up uh, using the iTunes author, the iBook author, which allows me to create a textbook of this and embed the music, the embed mm -hmm. videos and training and illustrations and all that stuff. So that'll be out. That be theatrical close-up plus theatrical cabaret. Mm -hmm. So it'll use stuff from the lecture as well that's in there. Um, I am thinking about it's about time for me to do another theatrical piece. We did Radnevsky's Real Magic about three years ago, four years ago, um, and that was a theatrical piece where I worked with an avant-garde theater director and we did magic. So there's that. Bill Abbott is releasing these pieces for me. So we have Heartstrings is coming out, Phoenix is coming out, we have um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers is coming out, mm -hmm. and then we have this Key to Her Heart, which is going to be this complete routine that I feel so good about. We're also going to release that as well. So, you're, uh, stuff. you're working a lot with Bill Abbott, I heard. 
I didn't know about uh, about the cooperation between you two. I've never heard anything about it or or seen anything about it. Looks like so. It's we're just uh, Bill is Bill has this great eye for things that are good and commercial, and mm -hmm. he asked me and said, "Could we would we work together to release these items?" And I said, "Okay, yeah." You know, I've thought about putting them out on my own, but I really like Bill has got a great eye and understanding about things. He has a great vision. Yeah. And so I was very happy when he said, I'd like to work with you on this. Okay. So um, it was great. I look forward to that. He's from Canada, huh? From Toronto. Oh, from Toronto. Exactly. So do you travel from uh, America to Canada? He came or? down uh, okay. this summer. He came down to, me, to my house in New Jersey. He and his wife came down and we worked for a week on both filming the live performances at Monday Night Magic and other places and then we filmed uh, interviews and the training and the other stuff that's all happening there. So so we do, and I'll be up in Toronto. I'm just setting up a lecture tour up in Canada as well now, so. Okay. So yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Peter, I want to thank you for your time. Pleasure. And I hope to see you soon. Yeah, it'll be a delight. Thanks. Thanks.